Hello again, everybody. Um, we're back with another larger board repair again today, uh, like I usually say. Um, I thought this one would be a good candidate to uh, do a video on. Um, it's another 13-inch uh, uh, retina board. Um, this is the 820-3475 uh, model, and uh, the customer sent it in saying that there was no power uh, to it. Now, I know it's liquid damage because I looked at it. Unfortunately, the customer, when they wrote in, on their work order sheet they said won't power on. Um, it would be nice to know uh, if you're a customer and you're going to be sending us a logic board um, to just go ahead and say it's liquid damaged. Um, that way you know if, if you email us about a quote or anything it's best to go ahead and just say you know it's liquid damaged it's not powering on instead of just it's not powering on uh, because when we go to quote you um, it's going to lead to a whole different uh, type of quote that we would get you because um, you're looking at different uh, outcomes. When you have a liquid damage board, uh, most likely you're gonna have other parts that are gonna need to be repaired. So it's best if you go ahead and know that in advance. Um, so if you email us in for a quote and you have a liquid damage board, just let us know um, that it's liquid damaged and we can get you a quote back. Um, just a little uh, hint for the future because you don't wanna be um, surprised when you send it in saying, uh, you know, I didn't realize it was going to be that much, but, you know, if it was liquid damaged, you know it's going to be a little bit more than just if the board itself was bad, because other components are going to get damaged, usually when you have a liquid damage machine. Uh, anyways, so this one uh, is liquid damaged, and uh, I'll show you the reason why. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you the microscope. And uh, you see uh, some components here at the top. This, this has to do with your display, your display connector is on the other side of the board here. Uh, so these components here, um, if you are able to see that clearly, um, let me get some tweezers so I can point it out to you. Uh, you have this resistor and these uh, this fuse and this, these capacitors here that are liquid damaged. And you can see that with the, um, with the corrosion that's going on um, around that chip, that resistor especially. So that's one area that we're going to have to pay attention to when we're replacing these parts. And another area I found uh, was over here by your P-Bus chip. This is your charger chip, uh, which uh, gives power to your battery to charge it, but also to the, uh, the rest of the machine. And also when the battery has power, the battery comes from, or the power comes from the battery through this chip and then the, through the rest of the machine as well. Uh, so this is a very important chip, and as you can see here, uh, this is uh, liquid damaged here, this component, this uh, resistor here. Uh, so what we're going to do is just going to replace these parts. Now I'm going to go ahead and s uh, scan over the rest of the board with you uh, just to make sure that we have these two parts only that need to be fixed. I'm not seeing any more liquid damage. liquid damage on the bottom side of the board. So far so good. Um, I don't know if you can see that. This is your J tag. Uh, connector. Let's see if I can get you in good focus. Um, if you can see in there, you see that? That's a little bit of corrosion there. Now this chip right here goes to your SPI ROM chip, uh, which is on the opposite side of the board. Uh, this is like your BIOS chip uh, right here. So um, when uh, this is not working correctly, your SPR ROM, the machine won't boot. Um, won't boot at all. So uh, this chip looks fine, but your JTAG, now the JTAG is where uh, an Apple store or something, they can they can plug in uh, to this connector here and program 
your SPI ROM chip. Um, so if this um, is liquid damage at all, what can happen is it can cause, see how the leads go to this area, which is over here to your SPI ROM. Um, if any of those get shorted out, or bridged or anything, um, it can keep your ROM chip from working. And that can keep your machine from booting on. So uh, really this connector is not useful at all to us. Um, so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and remove it completely just to make sure we have no bridge or short uh, in that connector. And so I'll go ahead and do that now just with some hot air. It doesn't matter if it melts the connector because we don't really need it. So I think the rest of the board looks good except for these two spots in the back. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull those parts off and we're going to replace them with some good parts. So make sure you're in view here. right there um, is some uh, I've heard it called the windshield wiper method it's where you wipe everything from that area and then just replace it you don't have to know it particularly which part is bad um, because there's corrosion around those parts so you're not going to sit here and waste time measuring each component uh, to see which one is bad or good uh, might as well just go ahead and remove them all uh, put new solder on the, the pads and replace them uh, there's nothing wrong with doing that. We have plenty of donor boards, um, and it's just a waste of time to sit here and measure each one. So that's what I did. Put a little of this liquid acid flux on these pads, and this um, flux right here works really good when you have some uh, oxidized pads. Uh, it gets that oxidation off and allows the new solder to go on those pads nice and clean. So as you can see, this, this pad at the top is oxidized. See how it just came right off without even scrubbing? Because sometimes um, you think you have to scrub the pad to get that oxidation off. And in doing that, sometimes you can damage the pad and even like remove the, pla the pad completely. And you don't want to do that because then you're just going to have to run wires and it just becomes a pain. So, okay, I got new solder on that. I'm going to clean that liquid flux off. Okay, now we have nice clean joints there. I'm going to add some of this flux to the area. This is the MC559 uh, uh, Tacky Flux. Uh, made by Mtech. Just putting that on the around that area there. And now I'm going to get a donor board. If I can find one. Alright, here we go. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I laid you probably won't be able to see it because your field of view is smaller than mine. But I'm going to lay this uh, this board on top of this board like this so I can see which parts I'm removing and then just move them straight over to where they belong. 
So I'm just going to show you where I'm soldering because you won't be able to see um, the other board where I'm pulling the parts from. Unfortunately, I just don't have the, the field of view to show you that in this microscope camera. Right, here we go. Actually, I can do this. I can move side to side. Now you may look at that and be like, man, that's sloppy. Yeah, it is right now, but watch this. Put a little flux on it. And then you just run the heat gun over them all, and you'll watch them straighten up. So now they all move back into place. There you go. Now they're all nice and even. Clean it with some... Alcohol. There you go. Now you have those parts replaced. And now down here to the PBOS chip, we're going to replace uh, probably a couple of resistors there. And then remove those two. Yeah, see how that one, the pad, is very rusted? Let's see if I can get that revived with this liquid flux. You can see how it already changes colors a little bit just by adding the flux to it when it's hot. So I'm just going to barely touch. There you go. see how it revived? And that's back. Solder on it now. Okay. Now we're going to move some new chips over now. Or no, new um, parts. See how easy it is to clean it while it's hot because <laughs> the alcohol evaporates so quickly. So there we go. Now we have uh, those parts on there, and that looks much better. All right, so now that we have those parts replaced, uh, let's plug in and see if we get any power to the board. Customer's fan. Safe. Oops. Get our power adapter. And we have a fan spin. Let's see if you can see that. Okay. I stopped it. <laughs> but we have a fan spin now. It stops completely when I touch it. Should start up again. There it goes. 
All right, so we have uh, power to the board. Now let's plug in a display and see if we get a display. power and we have backlight as you probably can see from our other video I showed you how you take your nail a little bit just press you can see the backlight light up really bright around that area and we'll, but we'll go ahead and show you until we get a, um, a question mark with a folder here or a folder with a question mark takes a little bit usually to do that but it should be there here it is so we have our folder with a question mark in it so our board is working so what I'm going to do now is uh, get this uh, board back into the customer's unit put their uh, SSD stick in it make sure it's booting completely uh, do a couple diagnosis maybe run ASD on it just to make sure it's uh, passing everything but um, that fixed it. And, and again, if you have a, a machine that you're wanting to send to us and you're contacting us for a quote, um, don't be shy. Don't uh, be hesitant to tell us that you've liquid damaged machine. You're not the only one. Um, it happens all the time. Um, it's best just to go ahead and say, yeah, um, it's liquid damaged. I spilled something on it. That way we can give you a roundabout quote just to let you know uh, to be expecting uh, these different types of things that we commonly see with liquid damaged machines. Um, if you contact us and say there's uh, just no power um, and you're hiding that you liquid damaged it, which is, I understand, it's embarrassing, um, uh, but there's no reason to do that. We see it all the time. Um, we want to give you the best quote possible and we want to get you uh, expecting or knowing what you're getting into before you send it to us. So anyways, um, I hope you learned something new. I uh, hope this helped you out with anything in the future. Um, if you have any questions or comment, please be, to, please be sure to leave them below. And I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we'll see you the next time. Have a nice day.